But let's get to the topic of the day. And I'll tell you this. It is not very often that I talk baseball on the Aaron Torres Sports Podcast. We are on episode 418, and if you've listened religiously from the beginning, you know not a ton of baseball on this show. I think one time about three years ago when the show first launched, Nick Coffey was a regular guest, co-host, whatever. I seem to remember the Dodgers being in the playoffs. I seem to remember yelling and screaming and swearing and turning off a bunch. I probably lost a bunch of listeners that night, but uh, I really don't talk baseball for, frankly, a few different reasons. I think, one, um, it's just not a sport that I cover on a day-to-day basis, and one thing that you guys know about me, I always try to bring a unique perspective, a fun perspective, but most importantly, an educated perspective. And I just don't have time to follow 30 Major League Baseball teams and and figure out who's hot, who's not, bring out some hot takes, get unique, get interesting, get fun, get this, get that. The second reason is I don't think most of you generally care about Major League Baseball on a day-to-day, minute-to-minute basis. I'm sure many of you love your individual team, whether you're a Reds fan, whether you're a Cubs fan, whether you're a Dodgers fan, a Yankees fan, a Braves fan, but I don't know that many of you are locked in on all 30 teams on any given night. And so it is not a sport I talk about because it is not a sport that really leads itself to being a national talking point. But on last Thursday, Major League Baseball did about as well as it possibly could to put itself in the national spotlight to make it relevant for at least one night with the Field of Dreams game, with the the moment that stopped. And listen, I know you guys liked it because it was the highest rated regular season baseball game since 2005. So I know a lot of you watched it. I know a lot of you cared. And I just want to give credit to Major League Baseball for finally doing something right. I want to talk a little bit about the game. And then, as I said, to lead the show, really want to take a moment and think about how could other sports take advantage, maybe do something similar. And of course, how can Major League Baseball use this to hopefully fuel itself uh, to, to basically be in a position where they have these unique one-off things that get us more interested in baseball. In terms of the game itself, listen, again, Major League Baseball doesn't do very much right, but this was about as good as it gets. For those of you who didn't see it live, I'm sure many of you at the very least saw the highlights, and the highlights were just you know breathtaking, really. Uh, it played off, obviously, I'm sure all of you know, Field of Dreams, 1988, a movie that was nominated for Best Picture, they, they built a field in the movie, spoiler alert, by the way, if you haven't seen it yet, uh, sorry to spoil a movie that's 30 years old, but spoiler alert, Kevin Costner, of course, builds a baseball field in his field of corn that he owns. He's a corn farmer. Well, Major League Baseball built a field not very far from where that original field was made, where the movie was shot. And of course, they bring in two teams, the Chicago White Sox, who played a very prominent role in the movie, the New York Yankees, who resonate with everybody, and they played a baseball game. And I thought everything that Major League Baseball did on that night, and credit to Fox, I obviously work for Fox Sports Radio, had nothing to do with this game, but uh, I I thought both did an incredible job. Whether it was... Um, you know, having Kevin Costner there to narrate some stuff, whether it was James Earl Jones narrating things coming in and out of commercial breaks, whether it was the players walking out of the cornfield, whether it was the home run in the cornfield to win the game. I know Major League Baseball couldn't control that. The announcers wearing old school gear and bow ties and hats and uh, trousers and whatever. I just thought the ambiance was perfect. And so in terms of why it worked, in terms of why we cared, Two reasons come to mind for me as to why it was so cool uh, and, and, you know, why we need to credit Major League Baseball. First of all, one, like I said, it touched all the feels. It hit all the feels. And one thing about sports, we get nostalgic about sports, right? We lo- Everyone loved sports growing up for whatever reason. Many of us think sports was better back in the day, whatever, da, da, da. But... Major League Baseball specifically does nostalgia very well, and this movie specifically makes you feel nostalgic, and the fact that they were able to take so many elements of this movie, it just made you you feel good inside, right? When the players are walking out of the corn, when you hear the music. Didn't everybody just want to call their dad and say, Dad, can I have, let's go have a catch in the backyard. It made you feel good. It made you feel nostalgic for baseball, for the movie, etc. The other thing that I think it did really well, which a lot of great sporting events do, right? Part of the Super Bowl is not the game itself. Your wife, your husband, whomever that maybe isn't a sports fan, your son, your daughter, they don't just watch the Super Bowl to see uh, the Bucks versus the Chiefs and what, what did the Chiefs run on third down. 
No, they watch the Super Bowl because of the commercials. They watch the Super Bowl because of the halftime act. They watch the Super Bowl because of the pregame. They watch the Super Bowl because of the puppy bowl leading into the Super Bowl. And that's what I thought this game for Major League Baseball did so well, was they hit on all of the little things outside of the game itself. So just as an example, you didn't have to be a baseball fan to watch it again as an example. My wife was walking through the room when this game started. She has seen uh, Field of Dreams in large part because I forced her to, whether she wanted to or not. She loves the movie, and she sat down and watched a little bit with me. She's not a White Sox fan. She's not a Yankees fan. Heck, I'm not a White Sox fan or a Yankees fan. But to me, again, the, the, the visual elements of it made me feel nostalgic, reminded me of the movie, of how much I loved that movie. My wife loved the way that the players were dressed and the old school uniforms, the way the announcers were dressed. And so just, again, credit Major League Baseball because I think what this did was it hit the feels and it hit everybody. You didn't have to be a baseball fan to watch. You didn't have to be a diehard. You didn't have to be breaking down uh, the pitch count from Lance Lynn or whatever to really enjoy this game. I do think coming out of it, came a very interesting question as well, which is how can Major League Baseball capitalize on this, do unique stuff? And then more importantly, I thought it was really interesting, there were a lot of other sports writers in other sports sitting there saying, how can my sport do something like this? I saw NFL writers saying, that was great. I haven't watched a baseball game in forever, myself included. Aaron Torres, I have not watched a, as much of a regular season Major League Baseball game as I did with this. And I think you saw a lot of NFL writers saying, what can we do? NBA writers saying, what can we do? College football, college basketball, etc. And so what I want to do now is take a couple minutes to discuss what can other sports do to replicate this? And then on top of that, what can Major League Baseball do to do more unique one-off events that get us tuned in, get us locked in as a national audience? In terms of other sports, look, I think there are certain sports that we really don't need very much of this, right? I think it worked for baseball because baseball is a sport that the entire season goes so long, it's hard to have one game stand out amongst all others, but I don't think that all these other sports need it, right? Like college football, perfect example. I don't believe that college football needs to do anything different other than what they always do because you only get five or six LSU home games a year. Every LSU home game is a spectacle, so I don't think it makes sense to bring an LSU football game off of LSU's campus. Keep them there, keep the band there, keep the cheerleaders there, keep the tailgate there. It's awesome. Same with Ole Miss, same with Tennessee, same with Ohio State, Michigan, Oklahoma, Georgia, Kentucky, Florida, whatever. I don't think college football needs it. I would kind of say the same with the NFL. We watch the NFL for the players, for the storylines, for the narratives. It's once a week. There's only 17 games in a regular season, up from 16 last year. I don't know that we need that much different in the NFL. And I do believe credit to the NFL. They've actually done a pretty good job of kind of creating unique one-off games, even in the context of their season. They've played games in London, they've played games in Mexico City, and there's other events around NFL games that get the casual fan to tune in. Breast cancer awareness, military awareness, things like that. So college, fo college football, NFL, I don't know that they need it. And I'll say this too, college basketball has actually done a really good job with this. I know a lot of people love to criticize college basketball. They have done an awesome job with the military games. We obviously had the game played on the aircraft carrier many years ago. If you remember, North Carolina played Michigan State on an aircraft carrier in San Diego. Um, you know, we've played games on military bases. We've played games in Alaska, Hawaii, Japan, Germany. Just college basketball does a really good job of doing one-off events. And I'll also say this. The NHL has done a great job with the Winter Classic. Most recently, a game in um, a game in uh, uh, Lake Tahoe on a lake pond hockey. It was really cool. So credit college basketball, credit the NHL for finding unique ways to present their product. Uh, and again, we watch some of these college basketball games because it's on an aircraft carrier, because it's unique. Uh, same with NHL, etc. The one sport that I really do think could take advantage of this, though. I do think it's the NBA, and listen, I'm not going to do the whole criticize the NBA for this, criticize the NBA for that, but I do think in some ways a lot of the problems that Major League Baseball has are similar to the NBA. 
The NBA has 81 regular season games. It starts during football. We kind of don't really pay that much attention, certainly during football season. And then in a regular calendar year, once the Super Bowl ends, we turn our attention to March Madness. So the NBA, I think, is in the same situation as Major League Baseball. What can we do to stand out? What can we do to make our product unique? And I did have a few thoughts for, for the NBA. First of all, uh, you know, again, Field of Dreams, it's nostalgic, it's interesting, it's different in baseball. The NBA should play a regular season game at Rucker Park. And I got a little pushback on it, and people said, uh, NBA players will never play on blacktop. Um, these guys can't play one game. And, like, I'm not Mr. Criticize the NBA for everything. But they can't play one game on the blacktop for what would be essentially probably the single most interesting game that you could possibly schedule in an NBA regular season. Imagine the Knicks playing... I don't know, the Brooklyn Nets maybe, Kevin Durant, by the way, a guy that has played at Rucker Park. Rucker Park, by the way, I think most of you know, very scenic, very original, very unique uh, uh, street street ball place in the city of New York. It's a place where all the greats played growing up. Uh, and more recently, Kobe Bryant has played there. Kevin Durant has played there. And I just think you have the chain link fence. Uh, you have the rowdy crowd. I think it would make for an awesome NBA regular season game, a must-watch NBA regular season game. If you're worried a little bit about the weather, I understand the NBA. Um, I understand the NBA, of course, is played from basically November until April. If you don't think you can get in a regular season game at Rucker Park, do it at Venice Beach. Venice Beach has the famous basketball courts made, made again, famous by white men can't jump. Uh, it's worth noting there was actually, there used to be a high school All-American game. The Under Armour All-American game was played at Venice Beach. I, I went to a couple of them when I first moved to L.A. It was, I think, 2012, the summer of, and they had the Under Armour All-American game. Julius Randle played in it. Uh, the Harrison Twins played in it. Um, Aaron Gordon played in it. I can't remember everybody that played in it, but the point is they play games there. They kind of have a makeshift court, and I think that'd be really, really, really cool, of course, in a a homage to white men can't jump. If you can't do Rucker Park, figure out a way to get an NBA regular season game there. I don't want to hear that NBA players cannot play on the blacktop. I don't buy it one bit. Lastly, what I would say is this. I do think for Major League Baseball, this should be an eye-opener. This should be an eye-opener that there are ways, even in a 162-game season that starts April 1st and ends October 1st before the playoffs, to stand out to a national audience. Now the job is to capitalize it and make sure you take advantage of what you did and what you're doing to, again, bring in an audience, even if it's only for a night, even if it's only for a weekend, whatever it was, this was so cool, and there's no reason you can't capitalize on it. And what I would also say is this, you can't keep going back to the well, okay? I saw Major League Baseball wants to do this next year. I'm not opposed to doing it next year, but it's never going to be the same as the first time you do it. It's never going to be the same Chicago White Sox, old school Chicago Black Sox uniforms coming out of the cornfield. I'm sorry. It will not be the same uh, when the Tampa Bay Rays are playing the Oakland Athletics uh, in Iowa. I, it'll still be cool. It'll still be fun. But eventually, like everything else, if you go back to that well too many times, it is just not going to be as exciting and fun as the original. The Toronto Blue Jays versus, uh, you know, the Seattle Mariners, I don't know, resonates the same as the Yankees and the White Sox. So I'm not saying Major League Baseball shouldn't do it, but what I do think they should do is consider alternatives in unique one-off setups to play games. One thing that stood out to me, I actually saw this on Twitter. I wish I could give the guy credit. I didn't see who actually put it out there, but it got my brain going. Major League Baseball, I truly believe, should do this. And it's a point that was made on Twitter, so credit to the guy or girl who put this out there. Major League Baseball, the one weakness Major League Baseball has is that Major League Baseball, they have so many games on, uh, on the calendar, right? They have 81 home games, 81 road games, 162 games. That has always been seen as a sign of weakness for Major League Baseball. To me, use it as a sign of strength, and as this gentleman recommended, go ahead and play one home series a year. So you get 81 home games. It would cut you from 81 to 78. Go play one home series a year someplace other than your home ballpark. And what do I mean by that? To me, it could mean a million different things. It could just be taking the show on the road to someplace where you know you have fans. It could be doing a special one-off deal. It could be a lot of variables. Let me give you a few examples. So first of all, buddy of mine, 
hosts radio in Fargo, North Dakota, okay? Uh, he is the sideline reporter, the, the broadcaster for North Dakota State football, which, of course, has had a ton of success. Carson Wentz played there, Easton Stick, who now plays for the Los Angeles Chargers. Really great FCS football program. But when it's not football season, he talks sports like anybody else. And because North Dakota does not have its own professional team, North Dakota has kind of adopted the Minnesota teams. Minnesota, for people who aren't great at geography, I didn't know this until I looked it up. Minnesota borders North Dakota, North Dakota to the west of Minnesota. And so when they cheer on a football Sunday, they cheer for the Minnesota Vikings. When they cheer for an NBA team, they cheer for the Minnesota Timberwolves. And when they cheer in baseball, they cheer for the Minnesota Twins. How can we not get the Minnesota Twins out to Fargo, North Dakota, or South Dakota for one series a year? Now, is it going to have the same effect as the Field of Dreams game? No. But you mean to tell me there isn't a cool spot somewhere in Fargo, North Dakota, that you could not set up a baseball field, get 2,000, 3,000 locals there, and play a really cool series for them? To me, I think it's a great idea, because if you just break it down in its simplest form, what it does is this. It makes something unique and interesting during the regular season in baseball. Are you going to get the ratings that you got for the Field of Dream game? You're not. But at the same time, it will expose Major League Baseball to another part of the country that sometimes that, that does not have it, right? The game in, on Thursday night in Iowa was the first ever Major League Baseball game in Iowa. There were kids that, that can't just get in the car and drive to Chicago or drive to Milwaukee or drive to wherever to watch a Major League Baseball game that got to see Major League Baseball. Aaron Judge was in their hometown. That's pretty freaking cool. So why can't you do it in a situation like that? Why can't the Cincinnati Reds, a lot, we got a lot of fans in Kentucky. Why can't the Cincinnati Reds come play a series in Lexington or Louisville? Expand the brand, get people interested. The Atlanta Braves, why can't they come to the Carolinas? Why can't they come to Nashville, Tennessee for the fans that can't just drive down to Atlanta to see a game? Uh, you know, I'll give you another example. The Boston Red Sox, most of you know, I grew up in Connecticut. Connecticut's kind of a part New York, part Boston state. But the rest of New England is Red Sox country. I would argue they're as passionate and diehard in Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Rhode Island as they are in Boston. And so can you not get three games a year up in Maine? The, the Red Sox AA affiliate is, is in Portland, Maine. If the Red Sox played a regular season series in Portland, it would be the single biggest sporting event in the history of the state of Maine. And people will tell, oh, Maine was good in college hockey, this. and It would be the biggest sport, sporting event in the history of Maine. I'm sorry, it would be. There is no doubt about it in my mind. I know some of you say, well, you know, you could drive from Maine to Boston, and many people do. It would still be cool. It would still be great for Major League Baseball. You mean to tell me you wouldn't tune in just to see that little harbor in Maine, just to see what does it look like? They're playing a game in Maine. I've never been to Maine. I want to see what it's like. Again, you just keep going on down the list. The Seattle Mariners, they're right next to the state of Idaho. Seattle, of course, is in Washington, Idaho borders. Build a field next to a mountain. I don't know. Give me a mountain range in the background. I'm watching. The Arizona Diamondbacks play a game somewhere on the grounds of the Grand Canyon. I'm not saying you got to play right up next to the Grand Canyon. You got to hit home runs into the canyon. You got outfielders chasing, uh, you know, home run balls and they're falling into the canyon. But you can't build a field. I, I don't know. I'm just spitballing here. I don't have all the answers, but what I'm saying is there has to be ways to make unique one-off games for Major League Baseball that get all of us invested. Buddy of mine, Rich Orenberger, I was hosting on Fox Sports Radio. We actually talked a little bit about this. Rich lives in San Diego. He said, look, man, we got a great military base. Uh, well, well, he was talking about apparently there was a game at Fort Bragg a few years ago, and I said, there's a beautiful military base, Camp Pendleton, that's about a half an hour from San Diego. Get a game on that military base. I don't know how it works. I can't figure out all the logistics for you, Rob Manfred. But if we can play college basketball games on military bases in Alaska, Germany, Japan, whatever, we can figure out a way to play baseball games in unique settings, including um, you know, a military base, maybe on a 4th of July, on a Memorial Day weekend, whatever. Bottom line, listen. I don't have all the answers. I know some of them would not work. I know not all of them would resonate the way the Field of Dreams games resonate. I get all that. But what I am telling you is very simple. Major League Baseball, this was the window. Don't keep going back to the well. Don't give me Tigers versus Mariners in Dyersville, Iowa next year and expect me to be as excited. But there are unique ways to get your audience involved. What I would also say is this. Aaron Torres podcast questions at gmail.com. 
Aaron Torres podcast questions at gmail.com. If you have any ideas, I want to hear from you. I am all in on this idea of making unique sporting events, making them cool, and helping Major League Baseball. So if you have any thoughts, any opinions, anything unique, anything interesting, feel free, as I said, to hit me up at Aaron Torres podcast questions at gmail.com. Would love to hear from you. But in my opinion, there is no reason that Major League Baseball should not capitalize on what came out of this weekend in Dyersville, Iowa. All right, I think that's it for this segment of the Aaron Torres Sports Podcast. Went 20 minutes on Field of Dreams. I'm incredible. But what I want to do now, take a quick break. College hoop season is here, people. And so what I want to do now, take a quick commercial break, come back, and basically just kind of just talk college hoops, right? Or talk college football. I think I said college hoops. But college football season is here. Uh, two Saturdays from now, we will have Nebraska, Illinois. We had some news over the weekend as Notre Dame, Michigan, Kentucky, all named starting quarterbacks. And what I just want to do, give you a quick preview of the SEC prior to Cole Kublick joining me. A lot of interesting storylines in that league. We will take a quick break, come back, talk SEC football. 